Hey guys and welcome back to some more F1 2019 and part 2 of our career mode and in today's episode we will be choosing which team we will be uh, joining this year. Obviously you guys will know from the thumbnail I'm guessing but I'm Joe if you're new around here and make sure you click that subscribe button for daily Formula 1 content. Uh, and thank you for all the support on uh, the first episode of this series, really do appreciate it, keep the support coming uh, and we'll keep pumping out these videos as quick as possible. So here we go then, choosing a Formula 1 team, choosing which team to race for is one of the most important decisions of course. And you've got to consider your options carefully. Highly ranked teams like Ferrari or Mercedes have faster, more competitive cars but they will be... Uh, they will expect their drivers to be achieving podium finishes right from the start of the season. They will quickly become unhappy if you fail to perform. Lower ranked teams have uh, less competitive cars, but their expectations are easier to meet and they tend to be more forgiving if it takes you a while to settle into your career. Reputation bonus. Signing an up-and-coming driver like yourself will be a positive move for any team. As a result, when you sign for your first ever Formula 1 contract, you'll be uh, receive a one-off bonus to your reputation with that team. Oh, wonderful. So, let's have a little look. Ah, welcome. Come on in. Take a seat. It's time we had the big conversation about your next move. Your performance at the F2 Championships last year got you a lot of attention from the Formula 1 teams. Some of it more positive than others. I'm not so concerned with who does or doesn't like you. You'll have plenty of time to win the doubt is over. But I am concerned with our choices. They're narrowing as we haven't shown commitment to anyone. Now, as your agent, my advice is to make your decision now. We can worry about comfort and finer points further down the line. I need you to review these. You've earned every single one of these proposals. So take your time, have a read through, and don't get too hung up on specifics. Let's get you a Formula One seat. Oh, so we still can choose everyone. Which I'm a little bit disappointed about. I thought they might uh, they might give us a bit more of a, a shoehorn now that we've picked the uh, the the, the uh, driver academy or whatever. But uh, I think we will go for Williams. I think it will be um, a tough, tough season, of course, starting right at the back and trying to work them back up into the midfield before moving on. Uh, to a different team at the end of the season. I think it's just something a bit different for me, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So the team expectations are to be consistent, and the ambitious team is one of the most prestigious names in the sport with a rich history of success, and they expect consistent improvement and plenty of points every season. So let's get into it and see what on earth happens in this F1 career. I do not know what to expect. Okay, so we've got uh, the contract here. We are going to be the second driver. Uh, our value is pretty low. Um, we can just accept that contract, actually, which I think seems pretty good. Uh, expected qualified position 19th, expected race position 19th, team order, second driver, uh, team goal, hard. Uh, you know, we get a few little perks. That's absolutely fine. A good uh, contract, actually, uh, for, our, for for us first up. So let's see what happens. Excellent choice. From my conversations with them, they're going to be very excited to pursue this opportunity with you. I'll let them know our intentions immediately. I'll have to clean up some final details with them, but that's what you pay me for. Other than that, congratulations. You've earned it. So straight into Australia, practice one. I don't know where Weber and uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Butler. I don't know where they've uh, they've ended up, but uh, I, I, I hear they do get teams in F1. I don't know who they replace or whatever, but we'll see. It's going to be very interesting to see where they are on the grid. They're certainly going to be higher up than me. Oh, hey, you're here. I'll catch up with you. Sorry, There's Claire. My way out, but your workstation's at the back over there. 
It should be all set up on the network, but let the guys know if it isn't. From there, you can access all the data you need to help us direct development of the car. Get yourself settled, and then head out to practice when you're ready. I'll catch up with you later, okay? There we go. Williams has a rich history, with several periods of dominance over several decades in the sport. It's high time for another one of those, and you can help make that happen. So let's knuckle down and get to work, okay? Awesome. So that is what we'll be doing. A uh, nice little new layout. And you can't obviously skip, so we will be doing practice no matter what. We've got career mailbox. So we've got Claire, uh, Carl, Emma, Emma, Carl, Jeff. Oh, wet race on the first Grand Prix. That's not what you want to hear, especially in a Williams. But, uh, this is our contract. Fair enough. Winning rivalries is a great way to earn respect from your team and around the paddock, which will help make it easier to negotiate favourable contracts. Your first rival is always your teammate, but you can choose who to declare as your second. The harder the rival from the eligible selection, the more respect you stand to gain or lose depending on the result. So we will have to um, pick a rival at some point. All the other screens seem to be the same. Obviously, our performance is terrible. Uh, they have actually got Ferrari ahead of Mercedes, so despite Mercedes' dominant start of the season. But hey ho, obviously they're uh, a bit biased for Ferrari at Codemasters, but never mind. Uh, you can see all the engines and stuff like that. So pretty much everything else is the same. But let's have a little look, at uh, a little nosy at where uh, those two ended up. Uh, oh, you can't actually look at standards and stuff. I don't know. I don't really know why. Uh, I guess the season hasn't started yet, has it? But uh, it's annoying. We won't find out just yet. So I'll get into practice and... Uh, we'll join David Croft and Anthony Davidson when we do. Welcome to Melbourne and the inaugural event of the F1 2019 Championship season. The session is starting shortly and there's a real sense of anticipation in the air. A feeling that anything can happen this year and if it does, well, this weekend could be the opening chapter to one of the most exciting F1 seasons ever. Joining me in the commentary box is, of course, Anthony Davidson. And it's great to have you back again. What can you tell us about this year's roster? Uh, there are some new faces this year, aren't there? Absolutely, Crofty. There's been a number of interesting signings over the last few months. Where would you like to start? Let's talk about the captain. Right, well, this is definitely someone to keep an eye on. Well, they've been signed up likely in no small part due to the way they carried themselves in the Formula 2 championship. They have a great track record of putting the team first. At one of the races, they even gave up their own position when their car had a technical issue so that their teammate, Lucas Weber, who also debuts here today, could get ahead. That kind of team spirit could take them a long way this season. Those two aren't the only new faces from Formula 2 this season, are they? No, this season will introduce fans to George Russell and Lando Norris, two very promising young British drivers. Plus, we'll meet Alexander Albon from Thailand and finally Devon Butler. Now, Devon was a bit of a controversial figure in Formula 2 last year. He racked up a lot of penalties over the course of the season, including one where he collided with his closest rival. It was an arty clip. Now, certainly after the event, they were nothing but professional in terms of how they spoke about the incident with Devon, but it's hard to imagine them being as polite about it behind closed doors. I think this rival will be one to keep an eye on over the next few races as both drivers take their first steps into the world of Formula One. Well, very interesting, that uh, little intro there. So they are all on the grid. It's quite difficult for us trackside, and for those back at the factory as well, as it's the first time the car has run since winter testing. The more consistent mileage you can get in these sessions, the happier we'll be. Uh, oh, we need to do the garage tutorial. Nah, get rid of that. Right, so let's have a little look, see if there's been any more uh, of these added. No, they haven't, so everything stayed the same there. Uh, of course, we have um the the three different tire compounds which are just soft medium hard this year of course they change race to race but there'll be no hyper soft ultra soft uh the the, the same um compounds exist but they are just split into soft medium and hard weekend to weekend uh just like the older days 
practice sessions, you can check the details in the car monitor. We'll get good data for both the race and factory teams, so they're well worth running. So let's have a little look then at who uh, is racing for who. So we have uh, Butler at a blue team. Uh, okay, so Butler's at Toro Rosso instead of Kvyat. Right. Uh, and Weber, or Weber as he was called, I think that might be Haas. Surely not Ferrari. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it's quite the same red. Uh, oh, it's uh, it's Sauber um, or Alfa Romeo. So he's with Kimi Raikkonen. Okay, okay, that's that's cool. That's cool. So, um, yeah, I, I wish we'd sort of had a cutscene or something. I'm guessing there's there's no more dialogue in this season, but but who knows? We'll see. Uh, so what I'm going to go and do now is is do the practice sessions and stuff. Uh, I think at the moment I've accidentally put on one shot qualifying. I thought that F2 stuff would be more. Um, weekend based but it wasn't really um, oh shut up Jeff <laughs> um, so we will just be uh, d doing the full qualifying if I can get that changed but if not uh, we'll see but yeah I'll see you guys uh, in qualifying unless anything else happens We're just about ready to kick off today's qualifying here in Melbourne. It's the Australian Grand Prix. I want to talk briefly about the strategy in these qualifying sessions. Anthony Davidson, how can a driver adjust their approach to gain those critical extra tenths of a second? Well, qualifying isn't about adjusting your approach necessarily. It's more about trying to repeat a low fuel run that you've practiced prior to this session. You're looking for perfection on the lap, and that's hard to achieve if you're trying something new. There are some variables that can stand in your way, however. Track position or unexpected yellow flags, for example. Coupled with ever-changing track conditions, it's important to be out there at the right moment. But as a driver, you have to try and ignore these distractions and just keep your mind focused on that one perfect lap. Well, here we are, ready for qualifying. 19th is our um, expected position. So we will go out there straight away. I'm not expected to get out of uh, Q1. But, uh, you know, but the, we finished something like 18th in practice. So who knows? We might be able to do it. But I think this is about the right AI difficulty. Certainly in practice, we were competitive with the AI. It is just going to depend on... Uh, whether we can actually go out there and uh, perform the lap in qualifying. But uh, no, this game is feeling awesome. I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I've also turned on the HUD feature where you can have the clock running all of the, uh, the session like they do in real life rather than just the final five minutes, which is what it's been in previous games. And it, it's amazing. I just absolutely love the presentation style of this game so far. There hasn't been any cutscenes. I did have uh, one press interview to do uh, during the practice sessions. Ah, we've lost a little bit of the front wing. That's sad. Be careful with the front um, wing. You've taken some but we'll finish this flying lap anyway. Um, but yeah, apart from that uh, media session, there, there was nothing else new, so I decided not to show any of that just to keep the length of the videos down so the the way these videos will work will show um sort of the, the qualifying laps if we get through q3 we'll show the full uh qualifying laps but generally it'll just be highlights and then in the race uh we'll just show the action points like we did uh in the last episode so hopefully you guys are fine with that uh, oh well we've been this lap so i think we might as well come into the pits uh, and sort ourselves out because this front wing is has been damaged. So we'll come in, uh, stick on a, a, a fresh front wing, uh, engage pit limiter. It's I don't like that popping up on the screen, but never mind. So we'll drive into the garage, and I'll see you guys when we complete our first hot lap.
So here we are coming up to the line and it's 18th behind George Russell. I have no idea uh, or any concept of how close or far behind we are to Russell. But uh, I don't think it was too bad a lap. Uh, obviously big improvements can and will be made and we'll hopefully get a bit closer but as long as we're not commit to a level of being off Russell I'll be happy with that as a first qualifying session. Here we come then round the final turn what's it going to be? We're coming up to the line we're over a second up what's it going to be? Wow 16th for the moment we will definitely settle for that. But uh, it would still be out in Q1, which I guess we're expecting. Well, end of the session then. Let's see where we ended up. Uh, we didn't go out again because we'd used all three sets of soft tyres. So Weber uh, is out in 16th. Uh, Albon is out as well. So is Butler. We uh, end up 19th in the end uh, ahead of George Russell. So we qu out qualify our teammate by about a tenth. Miss out on beating a Butler uh, by a couple of tenths there in the end. But uh, yeah, not a bad first session for us. But it's all to play for in the race. New drivers, new cars, it's a new Formula One season. But it's the same Albert Park that we've come to know and love for more than two decades now. The place host to round one of a 21 race championship that takes us from here in Australia, across the globe and the eventual season finale at the Yaz Island circuit in Abu Dhabi. We're a stone's throw from the enormous Port Phillip Bay for today's race at the 3.3 mile Albert Park circuit. It's a bumpy racing surface here and the 16 corners could prove especially difficult in the wet conditions. Watch out for a safety car at some point during the Grand Prix. Once again, Anthony Davidson joins me for the race today, and it's a race where anything can happen as the rain is falling, grip and visibility is lacking. Could be something of a lottery out there, Ant. Well, that's right. There's always an added element of unpredictability when there's standing water on the circuit. But one thing that might help him with the grip is a new softer compound full wet and intermediate tyre that Pirelli have developed for certain circuits. We'll be seeing these new tyres for the first time today, yet another unknown on an already unpredictable day. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole. And it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Vettel, Gasly, Valtteri Bottas, and Verstappen, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Perez, and Roman Grosjean. Norris, Raikkonen, Kevin Magnussen, and Stroll, Sainz, Weber, Alexander Albon, and Devon Butler, the captain. George Russell ends our grid lineup. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. See if you can achieve 19th place or better. Right then, well we're starting on the dry tyres. I really wasn't expecting to be doing that today. Um, but I guess that's, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, so 15 laps. I think I'm going to stick a bit of extra fuel in there just so we can push a little bit harder. We're starting on the softer tyres. Uh, let's have a little look and see if we can actually start on the intermediates. Doesn't look like it, so uh, we'll just stick with the original strategy. Uh, I mean, the selected one uh, sees us go on to the... the um, the hard tyres at some point. I'm not entirely sure how good that's going to be. Yeah, I think we want to uh, go for this strategy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll go for that one. High tyre management. Uh, we'll be fine with that. So yeah, let's get into the race. This is going to be exciting. Uh, obviously we've got the formation lab to get us underway but uh, with the rain this is uh, this is going to be 
very, very interested indeed. A bit more grip than that on the start, but we need to warm the tyres properly now. Make sure you get some heat into the brakes as well. So there's going to be unpredictability in this race, and we don't know, you know, if we're going to be coming into the pits early on. Obviously, we've never had wet weather on this game, so we don't know how the tyres uh, reacted. We don't know what signs to look for. It's just going to be an absolutely crazy uh, opening race of the season, and I can predict that there's probably going to be multiple retirements as well. It's it's just going to be absolutely insane but uh yeah strap in for a an exciting series we've had some uh, some good battles over the years since uh, f1 2015 was the first game i did on youtube i've been playing these games since the ps2 era of uh f1 2004 i think was probably my first f1 game but uh yeah, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and make sure you keep up to date with it. Because, it, it, you know, it's I know we're right at the back of the grid. We're going to be slow early on. But, you know, think of how proud we're going to be when we get that first championship point. It's probably not going to be today uh, with these conditions. And, obviously, the pace of the car isn't ideal. But... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try our best. We will try our best. I think somebody said to start on lean mix for um, race starts last year, so we'll, we'll try our best. Lining up for our first Grand Prix of F1 2019. Lights out, away we go here in Melbourne, Australia for the first race of the season. We're not off to the best of starts. I think we're just going to stay nice and cautious into this first turn. Up the inside of Butler. Turns into the outside line. We're on the grass. Whew. Our former teammate Weber uh, definitely send us out wide there. Huge double lockup. We're just teetering around at the moment and we have a spin. That's not good. I think we might use a flashback for that. <laughs> I, I won't make a habit of using them this season, but just for the first race, um, I think we'll do... We'll do that because, you know, especially with these conditions, we don't want to be right at the back of our first Grand Prix. But I won't make a habit of them. They're just there in case any sort of BS happens, if you like. <laughs> That's the strongest profanity you'll get on this channel. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're closing in on Butler now at the start of this race it's it's going to be so tough to judge when to attack the AI because we don't know how aggressive they are we're having a little look down the inside going into the fastest part of the track this is not going to be easy and a little bit of contact there with Butler already first race of the season let's have a little look at this on the replay so we were coming down the inside Sort of see, well, Butler's lost a bit of his front wing. I don't think we're at fault there. A little bit of corner cutting. <laughs> Not going to lie there, but... Uh, just uh, make it through, and we've held the position just for now. So, I'm going to have a push on our former teammate, uh, Weber. I can't remember his um, first name. Lucas, isn't it? I was going to call him Dieter Weber because Dieter Weber was uh, in Rainbow Six, the old games on the PS2. And then the sniper of the team. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Devin Weston and Dieter Weber. Why not? Oh, we're having a 
look down the inside of Weber and we're through. So, up to 18th place now. And softer tyres are giving us that little bit of extra grip at the start of this Grand Prix. We're now closing in on our teammate and compatriot, George Russell. And the part of the track, the way we made the move against uh, Butler last time around here. Got very close there. But we're right behind in this gearbox here. Just sort of staying a little bit cautious, trying not to push too hard and lose a bit of our front wing. Because that would be an absolute disaster. So here we go, this could be a better chance. I don't know whether DRS is going to be enabled or disabled. You're hitting the energy deployment limit and losing ERS Oh, it is enabled. The the Lower the ERS deployment mode to prevent this. We've got Raikkonen. Did we lose any? You can use it from within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. I don't think we lost any front wing there, so they're, they're obviously a little bit more robust this year. Well, we got we got a chance here, and somehow we've managed to make it past. But we're sort of being boxed in here. This is terrifying. But we managed to make it through, and we're just behind Reichen and Reichen and then Albon made contact ahead, and that slowed everybody down, and we just sort of zipped past. So we're now up into uh, what is. 16th position, which is not too bad for a Williams, to be honest with you. We've got DRS on Raikkonen now. He moves to the inside line. We're staying on the outside. Yellow flags. No overtaking, so... Green flag. Just got put green flags there. we got DRS. But Raikkonen just got a burst of acceleration there. Butler's out of the race. Our big rival, of course. Oh... Almost took out Kimi Raikkonen there. That was that was terrible. But we're just losing grip on this track. Still raining after four laps. Lost that position at Albon. But still ahead of Russell. Well, we've got DRS on Albon, but he's got DRS on Raikkonen up ahead. We've got a chance, but we do, we are just gonna. Stay back from this battle at the moment. We don't want to lose our front wing or anything like that, so let's just keep it nice and cautious. We might have a little look into the first turn. Just got such better traction. Out of that final corner. I'm going to stick it in overtake mode. We've absolutely lost. Uh, Russell, I don't know where he's ended up. Next time you come in, we're leading our teammate by three points. Weber is, is now the car behind us, so Russell is, is completely gone. We're just being pulled along by Raikkonen and Albon here, but because they're fighting each other, they're slowing each other down and allowing us to be this close. DRS again on Albon, but he's once again got DRS on Raikkonen ahead. We're going to go down the inside of Albon. Keep it nice and clean. He stays on the outside and we're through. Okay, as long as we keep it on the track, the next couple of corners will be all right. So we've got Raikkonen right up ahead now. We're sticking in overtake mode. And here we go, Raikkonen's going to be powerless to resist here. As we go around the outside, he stays on the inside. A little bit bold there from Raikkonen. These AI are very aggressive, uh, is what I'm finding so far. But it's all good fun. And we're up to 14th, no, sorry, 15th position now. It's, it's very sad to be celebrating that, but that's the the hole that Williams are in at the moment but you know we've got a bit of clear air now 
So let's see what we can do as a notification comes up on me telly so I can't see it a, a thing. <laughs> So we're coming into the pits at the end of this lap. We've managed to get quite the gap to Albon and Raikkonen, who seem to be continuing their, their ding-dong battle behind. So pretty good so far uh, in this race. You know, the pace has been decent. So here we go. We're coming into the pits now. Got to get down. Only one stop to go. One stop. Damn it. Right, we'll, we'll flash back that one. I, I couldn't see what our speed was there. Right. There we go. That's better. So first pit stop of F1 2019. And let's see how it goes. Oh, Russell's in the pits as well. Interesting. So double stack in the Williams cars. To speed now. We're in 17th place, so it looks like Albon stayed out, but Raikkonen came in now then. We've got cold tyres on this damn track, so this is going to be interesting. But things are going well so far. But obviously these conditions uh, don't seem to be shifting, so anything can happen between now and the end of the race. Well, amazingly enough, after the pit stops for everybody, we've come out behind this uh, gaggle of cars, which goes all the way up to 11th place, which would be absolutely insane. And I mean, the, the, the Renaults aren't too far ahead, and they qualified 7th and 8th. The race pace is pretty good. Certainly in these changeable conditions, we seem to have a little bit more confidence uh, in the car. I guess because we're slower, we can uh, we can just floor it a bit more. In this engine mode, much longer. We're about to... Here we go. We got DRS on Norris and Perez. Have a look down the inside of both of them here. Big lunge, but we've kept it clean, and we're up into 13th place now. Nice work. Not bad at all. Nice. We almost spun it there. <laughs> well, here we go on Grosjean. He's on the hard tyres, so he's really slow in these conditions. He's just behind Kevin Magnussen in the other half, but we've just lost out a little bit there. And so it went for the, the inside, and he was defending it. And if you're not on the racing line in these conditions, it, it, it's really tough. Well, here we go again. We might get another chance. But he's also got DRS on teammate Magnussen. But we are catching up to the Renaults as well. I mean, I said it in on the formation lap that we had no chance of points today. But they're not that far away. Grosjean defends to the inside. We're going to go around the outside. He defends his line well. And this one right behind now. DRS once again. Chance around the outside going into turn four here. Or turn three, I think this might be. Either way, we are around the outside. And look at the cars ahead. Because they've been battling so much, we are now within a few car lengths of ninth place and look at Magnussen up ahead weaving left and right and this is a distinct possibility that we could actually get points in our first race which would be well an amazing achievement really in fact, Russell is nowhere near, though, suggests we may have to move up the difficulty, but it's difficult to tell in these dry races, because in qualifying, we were only a tenth quicker than him, and we were well off anyone else, so... You know, it's difficult to, to really tell, but in these mixed condition races, especially now that we've got full co traction control rather than medium, uh, you know, perhaps that gives us a slight advantage in these 
conditions over the AI, I, I really don't know. But, uh, a slight chance now. Well, we're through on Magnus and I, th I thought for a minute we were going to get a penalty there because we came up with the pit limit, I think. But we're all right. Well, he is having a look back down the inside and, you know, Magnus and he's not going to take any prisoners. A little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. But we're okay. Just about managed to get that round the corner despite a double lock up there, but we're okay. Now, up into 11th place. To the see Norris there. Uh, precious points. Uh, 1.7 seconds up the road. These could quite conceivably be the only points we have a chance of getting this season. If the. If the the Williams in real life is anything to go by so we gotta push hard We've got a better run out at the Norris here but second phase of the traction zone he's got away running out of opportunities on this final lap have to move that down the low because we are running out of fuel but we're right in his slipstream now Lewis Hamilton has won the Australian Grand Prix and we go down the inside of Lando Norris and he sort of just stopped I don't know what he was doing but we're in 10th we are in 10th and if we can keep it on the track we've got a world championship point in our first Grand Prix we're even closing up on Renault's Daniel Ricciardo and his teammate Nico Hulkenberg who's I think behind Stroll I can't believe Stroll's gonna finish seventh but Lewis Hamilton has won and we've come round the final corner and we're gonna finish tenth and get a championship point I mean <laughs> I don't think anybody would have predicted that at the start of the race and that is just unbelievable we might not even get another point this year that is just ridiculous and Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today tell me Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win well they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track I think their ability to keep their cool even during some of the more hectic parts of the race meant they were able to capitalize on the mistakes of other drivers giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. Well, a familiar sight this year. Hamilton, Bottas and Leclerc all on the podium. Mercedes 1-3. they'll be very happy with let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the driver's championship let's focus on the driver of the day Anthony Davidson who do you pick I have to give it to the captain they fought so hard and had incredible pace at times so I don't think anyone else did a better job today let's move on to the constructors Mercedes move to the top of the table well that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Well, I just can't believe it. I can't believe that we finished in 10th. Uh, Devin Butler, the only retirement there in the end for Toro Russell. Russell finishing way off the pace. So I, I don't really know where our pace came from. We were only a 10th ahead of Russell in qualifying. And, you know, it must have been the mixed conditions. We just had a bit more confidence to sort of go for it a little bit more and yes we used the flashback at the start but 
you know, I don't. I think we raced well from that point on, and uh, yeah, we got we picked up our first point of the season, which is amazing. I don't know what this view highlights feature is. Ah, oh, it's just a view replay of the race. I assume they haven't cut it into little highlights, have they? Ah, oh, they might have actually. I think they have. So they've done the start. I'm trying to work it out. Yeah, I think so. I think they've done it in the highlights, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, something we might use a little bit more later in the career mode, but let's uh, advance on and we'll see if uh, we've got any media interviews or whatever, and then we'll uh, do our first bit of R&D. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. How do you think Devin will react to having not been able to finish today's race? You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? You're breaking all expectations. What's your secret? How do you feel the weather affected the outcome today? Great. Well, that's everything. So we have it. Done the media interview now, and we'll see uh, if there's any cutscenes or whatever. I don't think there will be, because um, obviously the events are a lot less scripted now, and that we've got into the full F1 season. But uh, you know, we'll have a little look nonetheless. But uh, you can see, uh, yes, we still got the fastest lap over George Russell. So we can be happy with that. Got some resource points, which is all excellent. Uh, I don't think we can have any complaints with our performance. Looks like one of your rivals is also going to an upcoming historical event. If you choose to take him on, it might help get your name out there a bit. You're not the only driver to be handed by the press. Emails like the one I've just sent you will give you an insight on how your former Formula 2 rivals are handling the press. Be sure to check your emails regularly, as I'll be sure to send you any of the more, let's say, interesting press transcripts that come my way. So we got classic race coming up next, which I'll do off camera. I'm not interested in doing those on camera, but uh, there's some little media clippings and things there. Uh, you guys could have a pause of it and read of it if you like, but uh, I'm sure it's all uh, very scripted anyway. But let's get into the research and development. So. Obviously, where Williams struggle is uh, the chassis and the aero. So, uh, I think we'll go for aero first, just because um, we've sort of g'd up that department with our press conference. So, uh, and we'll go for some chassis stuff. Can we do even more? I think we can actually. So let's head into this. We'll get that. That's 4.33 now, so we're not quite on the level where we can do any more. But let's have a little look at what effect that would have. So that would take us up to about alpha uh, in terms of potential. I don't know when they're, they're going to come in. China, China, China. So uh, in a couple of Grand Prix time, uh, or at least you know after the next Grand Prix. But they, they might not work. You know, we, we have had that in the past where we lose... Um, our R&D progress due to a fault or whatever but that is where we're going to leave it for today anyway if you've enjoyed that then make sure you leave a like down below it really does help me out it means a lot to me as well subscribe to the channel for daily formula one content and i hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye